Hey everybody, it's Video Game Restoration, and today I have an Xbox Series X in. Now, this was taken to another shop for repair. It, it just needs an HDMI replacement. However, the shop that tried to repair it um, was unsuccessful. They said that it needed more work and had to be mailed off to be repaired. Now, when the customer explained that, my mind immediately jumped to this not being a successful repair and actually ended up being uh, damaged in the process so they might have been trying to cover the tracks now i don't want to actually say that's the case but that's kind of where my mind went but we'll soon find out now i've actually really been wanting to do a failed repair from another shop because i almost think of it as a test where if someone else can't do it but i can then i've successfully completed it now i have a feeling though that the shop that this was taken to was actually a cell phone repair shop or a tablet repair shop that don't do anything with video games so i can't really be too critical because that is a skill in itself and repairing systems is a skill in itself there's many people that can do both but they are separate things so as you can see they didn't reassemble it once they were done working with it the customer just took it back and came to me so we have our back plate which the back sticker was just kind of haphazardly taken off here we have our base plate and we have the hdmi ports that the customer himself had to buy because they didn't supply them okay because it's already been taken apart this should be pretty easy to continue to dismantle so pop this out and we will remove our optical drive there we go and this should slip right out perfect a little bit of dust not a big issue i'll give that a good cleaning before we reassemble it so everything uses a torque 8 bit which makes this super easy to disassemble going to unplug this here as well there we go massive fan we're also going to clean that as well super quiet there's two of these little green screws on the bottom, three of them actually. So we'll pop those out. Huh. Definitely the first time I've seen a band in a system. Again, that, uh, Everything being a number eight Torx bit is super convenient. One of these fins here are bent. Um, that's okay, not a big deal. Still work the same, but inner me is screaming a little bit. There we go, that's better. We're missing a screw right here. It might be in the bag. They said all the screws are in the bag, so we'll find out. Something I like to do is just if there's a difference in screws, especially if they're color coded, I'll mark which ones are which. That way when I'm reassembling it, I can tell where everything needs to go. Okay, so good news is the pads are still present on the board. Um, now that being said, it looks really dirty. Just a lot of flux on here. This is like really caked down here now too. I just have some electrical component cleaner. It's more of a solvent, kind of really helps, helps uh, break up that flux. Just because this is really, really stuck on. Looks like they may have burnt the board a little bit. So we have a scratch right here. However, it doesn't look like it's affecting anything. We've got a random solder blob right here um and it's taking away some of the board actually if i scrub too hard then we have all these burns and solder blobs in here okay well at least it looks like all of these pads here are intact so we have that going for us board should just release perfect okay no replacement oh my god goodness of the thermal pads oh man they torched this board okay well no big deal just gotta fix it that's all again using some contact cleaner first just to try to break up anything that's stuck on here
Now the good thing, it looks like all of these little components are all still here. We didn't lose those. So that's a plus. And I noticed that there's a little one right over here. Yes, right here. That's still there. So that's good. And I'm not seeing any other ones that are missing. So what I'm going to do is clean this board up a little bit. Um, just get all, uh, try to get some of that solder off of it. Um, and then I'll just try to drop a port on and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of solder braid and a little bit of flux. So I'm just going to put flux on these raised solder points. So my worry is that these solder points here won't let me put the port down flush. I'm just putting a bit of solder onto these pins. So I put a little bit of flux along those. Always moving, never holding it still for, or in any spot for too long. Let's take a look at that under the microscope. It's just not sitting well. All right, if you take a look here, the pins are just a little bit to the right. So I'm just gonna reheat that and just kind of push it over just a bit. But otherwise they seem to be sitting on the board, which is what we want. Um, I'm going to go over those with a little bit more solder, of course, but let's just move that over and then I'll tip them up. Okay, that looks a bit better there. That's as far as I'm going to be able to get it over, unfortunately. Probably could go over like a fraction of a millimeter, but I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is solder in those legs so it doesn't move anywhere. I'm going to solder over those pins, and then we'll give it a test. So the soldering iron is not doing too hot. I have had it for quite a bit of time, actually since I started doing uh, console repairs. So I think it's time to finally break and buy a new one. If you want to use any of the tools that you've seen, I have an Amazon list that has this soldering iron as well as the one I'm going to buy for a replacement. This has actually lasted me over two years and has done almost every repair I've done. So it's actually a pretty good budget one, but the next one I'm going to buy should be a little bit better. Um, but my link is there. It would really help support me if you want to get into this or if you want to use any of the tools. Okay, so we have our port on. Next, I'm going to replace this thermal paste. Um, it's actually, for as new as this system is, that's really dried up. It's best that we just get it replaced so we don't have any problems down the road. Uh, I found electronic component cleaner really, really works on getting up old thermal paste. Um, I found this at just like an automotive store. Okay. It almost worked a little too well. I kind of went into that thinking it was super, super old, kind of like something on a PS3 or 360. Uh, it was not. So I should have started with maybe a little bit of alcohol and Q-tips instead, but no problem. It just looks messy now, but we'll be able to easily clean that all up. Look at that. Okay, that's cleaned up. Now I have this stuff as well. I'm not gonna make the same error on this one though, although that is pretty dried up. I'm gonna put the okayest amount of thermal paste on. Then drop my heatsink on, just gotta make sure I do it the right way. I think it goes this way. That sounds about right. I'm going to place that on and just hold it. Put it down. There we go. Now I need my X bracket. Okay, so it's not fully reassembled just yet. I have it basically clamped back together really quick um, and the power supply plugged in as well as the power button plugged on. So we are going to see if this will show video. Um, no idea if it will. No idea. So let's find out. Nothing. <sighs> Alrighty, well. Back to the drawing board. 
Okay, so I've been playing around with this for a little bit now, and I think I found my problem. So this is called an HDMI breakout board, and basically what it is is it allows me to check each individual pin. So let's say, uh, let's turn on my multimeter here. There's continuity. So 20, so pin 20 is ground. So if I put pin 20 here, it goes to ground. If I go to pin one on the board and then I touch pin number one, I get that. So pin 17 is ground. Pin 16 is not ground, but it's shorting to ground. So that's either there's a short um, because of my HDMI install or there's a short somewhere else on the board. Now, unfortunately, this is on the other side of this board. So I again have to take off the heat sink and redo the thermal paste and all that stuff. But let's start our investigation. So I traced the short to the other side of the board and I ended up at this resistor. Now this is a good break in the electrical pathway that's gonna let me know if the short is on the chip side or if it's on the HDMI side. So what I did is I removed that resistor and I tested continuity to ground on the HDMI side, which was negative, and continuity to ground on the chip side, which was positive. So that tells me that this short to ground is most likely in the chip itself. Now this chip is the booster chip. It's found in the Series X, the Series S, and the Xbox One X. The problem with this chip is that you cannot purchase it anywhere. Microsoft has not made it available to sell. So that means that unless you have a donor board, you cannot replace this chip. Now donor boards for Series X's right now, because it's a new system, are astronomical. I'm, I cannot afford that in the least. So my only other option for this gentleman here is to bypass this chip. Now there is a danger in bypassing because the HDMI has five volts and the logic, I think it's 3.3 volts or something similar to that. You can basically accidentally give five volts to the three volt line and that's just gonna make your system explode on the inside or emotionally, one of the two. So I went to the customer with this issue and I explained our options and he opted for the bypass. Now I did of course warn him that this is a danger to your system and possibly even your TV if you're not careful. And he said he's willing to accept those risks. So I went on with the bypass. I started by removing the old chip and I found a whole excess of solder underneath it. So this tells me that the previous shop probably had a little bit too much heat on there and they floated this chip. I was able to find a reference to this bypass by using the Repair Legion Facebook group, which has a lot of awesome resources. And without it, I wouldn't have been able to do this repair. Okay, it's been a long night. I'm not even gonna put my mic on, so I apologize if the audio is janky. Let's see if this works. I literally have like tears forming in my eyes. I haven't properly put it back together with like thermal paste. Let's turn it off before it overheats. I'm going to bed. I did this repair back in February. It is now June and I just recently texted the customer saying like, hey, I still have your base plate because I forgot to put it on. And two, how's your Xbox working? And he said it's still working great. So the bypass has worked and it's holding up and nothing has been fried, thankfully. Now currently as I'm filming this, there is a PCB in the mail on its way to me which is going to help rectify this problem in the future. A gentleman by the name of Thomas, who is also on the Repair Legion Facebook group, has made a PCB that is an alternate to the booster chip. So this PCB is going to be a safe alternative for that booster chip when doing a Series S, X, or Xbox One X, and basically it's gonna provide an overcurrent protection just in case, and it's also gonna translate that 3.3 to the five volts on the other side, and there should be no damage either way. This is great for the repair community because there's tons of Xboxes out there that can't safely be repaired, and now there is an option to do that. If you're doing one of these repairs and you need that PCB, there's a link for Thomas's website, Tech Time with Thomas, down in my description. Please go check out that PCB, which Thomas developed. Actually, which he developed using PCBWay, our sponsor for this video.
PCB Way is a PCB manufacturer that also does CNC machining as well as 3D printing. I've just used their services for the first time a couple weeks ago and it was actually an amazing experience. I was able to build a PCB for a GameCube. I made my Gerber file and sent it off to them. They looked it over, found some issues, repaired those issues, sent it to me and said, is this actually what you wanted? I said, yep, it is. I apologize. I don't know what I'm doing with these. And they produced it, I think within 48 hours and had it shipped out. Very quick production time, amazing customer service. And I see their name popping up through a bunch of different creators and people making PCBs. So they're obviously trusted and have a really good name in the industry. Thanks again, PCB Way, for sponsoring this. There is a link to their website down below. So everything is reassembled. Luckily, all those screws were still somewhere within the package or the bag. So I was able to put everything back together. I gave the inside and the fan a quick cleaning. Now I just need to put this final part in. And we should be just about ready to finish this up. There we go. Now, when I disassemble these, I like to try to keep those little stickers so you can cover them back up so it doesn't look like anybody's been in them. Unfortunately, the original shop uh, doesn't do that, but I'll try to make this look at least a little bit presentable. All right, I have to kind of film with my phone here because the TV is just above my main camera here, but we'll power it on and yeah, right away we get a picture. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a controller um, to continue on with these screens, um, but we have video, uh, so that's a plus. Uh, hopefully we have audio. If we don't, uh, the customer's local, so um, I'll just be able to take it back and start troubleshooting it from there. But I can't see why it wouldn't. So fingers crossed, I'm just going to give this a really quick wipe down and then we'll be moving on. So this is just a little bit dirty. Um, there's just kind of like some scuff marks and it looks like maybe some adhesive got on here at some point. So I'm just going to kind of wipe it down real quick. Some of these are scuffs and I won't be able to get them out, unfortunately. But... We'll clean it to the best of my abilities here. Now I already cleaned some of these holes here to the best of my abilities again. Um, I don't know what it is with Microsoft lately, but they like putting holes in everything and it's just a pain to clean. But with that, it's cleaned, it's working, and we are done. If you like this video or if it helped you in any way, please consider liking it, hit that subscribe button, and also hit the bell to be notified uh, when, I, when I post videos, because that would really also help as well. Go check out some of my merch, and as always, let's save the consoles. Now I am self-taught and I'm learning more every day. For example, this was my first time working on one of these and doing one of those repairs. So please, I encourage you to learn with me, but do not imitate me without first doing your own research. This is in case I made a mistake somewhere. I don't want you making the same mistake. Take care.